In today's video, I'm going to explain to you Victor Wooten's concept of the 10 elements of music. I'm also going to show you why this concept is a never-ending source of ideas when it comes to improvising, composing and arranging. Bass hack coming up! Hey Bass Hackers, Misha here with MM Education, showing you how to learn faster and practice smarter by using the latest findings in neuroscience, so you can become the bass player you want to be, express yourself freely on your instrument and connect with your audience on a deeper level. So if you're new here, consider subscribing and at any point during the video, go check out the show notes in the YouTube description, bullet points for this episode, links to related videos and free resources all in the YouTube description. So let's get going and build some new neural pathways. There were times where I really felt stuck. I had a song, the arrangement was basically ready, but something just wasn't quite right and I couldn't put my finger on it. Now that I know about the 10 elements of music, I basically have a checklist to go through and guess what, each time it's one of the elements that I just haven't given enough attention to that made the whole song not sound like it sounded in my head. I can go back now, correct it, and sometimes it's really just one element that needs to change or needs a little bit more attention. Sometimes it's a combination of various elements. However, the 10 elements of music have never let me down when I needed to get unstuck. Here are the 10 elements of music. Notes, rhythm, technique, articulation, dynamics, sound, phrasing, silence, listening, and emotion. To simplify this concept a little bit, I group the elements into three categories. The beginner's elements, notes, rhythm and technique, the advanced elements, dynamics, articulation, phrasing and sound, and the mastery elements, emotion, silence and listening. The beginner's elements are the easiest to practice because you can measure the progress you're making quite exactly. Whenever you practice technique, or scales, triads, melodies, or rhythms. You can really tell how far you've already came and how much work you still have to put in. Day by day you can measure your progress, which is very motivating. And now I'm gonna bring up a controversial topic. The topic is practicing in front of your TV. What? A lot of people say they don't have enough time, but then they watch Netflix for two hours every night. Well, you can use that time. Generally, I advise against practicing while you're busy doing something else. The better your focus, the quicker you learn. But these muscle memory type of things like scales or even rhythm to some degree, that can be perfectly practiced in front of a TV. Because eventually you actually want to be able to do all these things unconsciously without focusing on them. So once your skill is at that level where you can consciously do it, practice in front of the TV and move it to your unconscious skill set. For the advanced elements, you need a lot more control of your fingers and your ears. You need to pay full attention to what you are doing because the differences are a lot harder to notice and to control than they are with the beginner's elements. It becomes harder to measure the progress from day to day. When you're practicing the advanced elements over a longer period of time, you will be able to measure the progress. But it really does take this big picture perspective to see how you advance from day to day. While on the other hand, it needs that ultra focus of being in the here and now to get the most out of that practicing time. The mastery elements of music are about awareness. What does your audience need? What does your band need? What does the song need? 
Why are you playing music? How does the music you play make you feel? And how do you want your audience to feel when they're listening to your music? Once you have the answers to these questions, it's the mastery elements of music that will get you there. Exercise number one. Take a riff or improvise a solo and focus on each single element for one minute until you really nail it. Then analyze what you've played and find out which element has the most room for improvement. You should keep your focus on that element for a little while. Because, as Victor says, the secret of being a well-rounded musician is to have all of these elements balanced. If they're out of balance, it doesn't really help to be able to play all the scales and notes and trides and arpeggios and whatnots, but have no sense of rhythm. There's got to be a balance. Victor is a big fan of practicing how you perform. So the next exercise is gonna be just like that. Improvise a solo. Record yourself and listen back to it. Again, focus for one minute on each element at a time. And now find out which is the element that makes you play the best solo when you focus on it. This is the element that you can always fall back to. You've got this. Now take one of the elements that were harder to apply. With a little bit of practice, can you make them sound more natural? If not, find exercises that will help you to internalize these elements instead of having to consciously think of them while playing your solo. Notes. Notes includes everything that has to do with pitches. From chromaticism, to scales, to triads, to harmony, to melody, it's all notes. Rhythm. Rhythm is anything from time signatures, to subdivisions, to corner call, to tempo, metronome, pulse, anything that has to do with time falls into the element of rhythm. Technique. Technique is quite a big one as well. It's not just how you play your instrument, but also the instrument itself. The cable, the amp, the cap, the effects you use if you use them. The microphone if you record through a microphone. Anything that has to do with the music in your head coming out of a speaker. Everything in that chain is technique. So you gotta practice using your amps and your pedals just as much as using your fingers. Dynamics. Dynamics is velocity or volume, how loud and how quiet you play. Most of us have this element internalized to some degree, but trust me, if you spend some time on really practicing and consciously deciding how you use dynamics to emphasize certain notes in a riff or a certain phrase in a solo, it will really make a difference. Articulation. Articulation is the length of the notes you play. So you can play really short and percussive notes or you can play them legato, really long. And just like in language, it really changes what you have to say and how it comes across. Do you see? Short notes can really raise the excitement of what you play. And long notes can really slow down the music almost. Make you feel more relaxed and calm. Phrasing. On the one hand, phrasing is just like in speech, the context. A sentence is not just a random pile of words after each other. One word refers to the next one and to the next one and to the next one and the whole thing makes a sentence, a phrase. If you approach a composition or a solo like that, it will sound way more musical and make a lot more sense to your audience. The other definition of phrasing 
is what Anthony Wellington told me is when you kind of ignore the rhythm not really ignore it but you play freely on top of it you don't try to nail every 16th subdivision you just play freely like they're doing blues for example sound is all about control controlling your technique because with your pedals with the technique that you choose your amp your cap your cable your instrument that's kind of your color board and sound is now taking these colors and mixing them and really having control over how much yellow or red to apply if i play the slap technique it doesn't mean i have to hammer every note i can use the same technique and play very soft that it doesn't even sound of the typical slap technique same for every other pedal or bass or technique you use. Silence. Silence is probably one of the most important elements of music. Although, then again, Victor says there's no such thing as the most important element of music. But maybe the most underappreciated one. Especially when we start out, we want to play as much as we can. We want to prove ourselves to ourselves, to our bandmates and to the audience. Which is fair and cool. I've had my share, I know that. But the best compliment I ever got was, I can tell that you are not showing us a lot of things you can do. I guess silence comes along with understatement. If you know what's the right thing for the occasion, you don't always have to pull out the whole bag of tricks. Just find exactly what fits and just think of it this way. If there wouldn't be silence in music, every single note would still ring. Every song would still run. Which brings us right to the next element, listening. If music is communication, then what's it good for if you're not listening? The communication is listening and talking not both at the same time you need to stop and listen to be able to take part in the conversation so always keep your ears open don't just play with your fingers listen to yourself when you practice listen to your band when you rehearse listen to your audience when you play a show emotion and feel Emotion is something that all of us have inside of us. For some of us, it's way harder to show. For others of us, we need to get it out there on a daily basis. And if we don't get our emotions out there, we're not very pleasant to be around. But depending on what type of person you are, emotion still is very, very important in music. Just think of a song that you love to bits. Does it evoke an emotion in you? Is it making you sad or happy or just really excited? Does it blow you away or does it relax you and get you really calm? All of these are emotions and we can use emotions to let our audience understand the message that we're trying to communicate. There's two sets of emotions really. One is watch yourself, watch your own emotions. How do you want to feel when you play music? And then there's the audience. How do you want your audience to feel when they're listening to your music? Because these are two totally different things. Not totally, but they can be different. If you're playing a really, really, really sad ballad, you don't necessarily want to break out in tears and throw your bass on the ground, leave the stage, go crying in the backstage. But if your audience starts to cry because they're so touched by your music, that's a win, right? So always think about the two emotions that are involved when you play a live show. So today I showed you how to use Victor Wooten's 10 elements of music 
to get unstuck when composing or leveling up your improvisation skills. Now it's up to you to not just take in the information, but instead creating new neural pathways by applying the newly gained knowledge. Question of the day. Which element are you going to focus on next? Let us know in the comment section. And remember, some of the coolest ideas come from you and the MM Education community. So definitely connect with everyone in the comment section. And if there's a topic that you would like to be covered in one of the future episodes, let me know in the comment section as well. All right, Bass Hackers, thanks for checking out this video. I hope it got you one step further towards becoming the bass player you want to be. Definitely subscribe for more videos just like this. And if you haven't downloaded my top 10 practicing hacks, I show you exactly what you need to do to learn more in less time. You'll learn about state management, about practice based setup, about having better focus and a lot more. So grab that for free with a link in the description. Until next time, MM Education helps you to learn faster and practice smarter. So keep up the good work and love and bass. Thank you.